people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Lipakshi Khurana with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India recently hosted the virtual summit of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The Indian Prime Minister said the SCO should join hands to fight terrorism and not hesitate to condemn countries that support terror. He also urged leaders of the Eurasian Political and Security Grouping to work for the welfare of Afghanistan and provide humanitarian aid to Kabul. A report. India has been a victim of terrorism for decades now, all thanks to neighboring Pakistan, which has remained a breeding ground of terrorists. The Islamic nation has created an elaborate ecosystem to support terrorism beyond its geographical boundaries. On the other hand, India over the years has been the one to denounce Pakistan's terror activities and exposed it on various international platforms. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the SEO Summit 2023 held virtually pointed out that promoters of cross-border terrorism are a problem for the world to handle. Russian President Vladimir Putin, China's President Xi Jinping and leaders of four Central Asian countries took part in the online proceedings as well as Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. Atankwaad Chhetriya Em Vaishwik Shanti Ke Liye Pramukh Khatra Bana Hua Hai Hum Chunauti Se Nipatne Ke Liye निर्णायक कार्रवाई आवश्यक है आतंकवाद चाहे किसी भी रूप में हो किसी भी अभिव्यक्ति में हो हमें इसकी विरुद्ध मिलकर लड़ाई करनी होगी कुछ देश क्रॉस बॉर्डर टेररिज्म को अपनी नीतियों के इंस्ट्रूमेंट के रूप में इस्तेमाल करते हैं आतंकवादियों को पनाह देते हैं एससीओ को ऐसे देशों की आलोचना में कोई संकोच नहीं करना चाहिए। Modi also urged leaders of the Eurasian Political and Security Grouping to work for the welfare of Afghanistan and provide humanitarian aid to Kabul. He said that Afghan soil should not be allowed to be used to destabilize its neighborhood. अफगानिस्तान की स्थिति का हम सभी की सुरक्षा पर सीधा प्रभाव पड़ा है अफगानिस्तान को लेकर भारत की चिंताएं और अपेक्षाएं एससीओ के अधिकांश देशों के समान है हमें अफगानिस्तान के लोगों के कल्याण के लिए मिलकर प्रयास करने होंगे अफगान नागरिकों को मानवीय सहायता एक समावेशी सरकार का गठन आतंकवाद और ड्रग तस्करी के विरुद्ध लड़ाई तथा महिलाओं बच्चों और अल्पसंख्यकों के अधिकारों को सुनिश्चित करना हमारी साझा प्राथमिकताएं हैं इट इज नोटेड दैट पाकिस्तान हैज बीन प्रोवाइडिंग लॉजिस्टिक हेल्प to terror outfits like Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan and Islamic State to flourish in areas bordering Afghanistan. Many of these terrorists are provided safe heaven to infiltrate into India's Jammu and Kashmir and carry out terror activities. Islamabad has failed to realize the consequences of sheltering and nurturing these terror outfits in its territory. On various occasions, these terrorists have even targeted Pakistan. In February, a major blast inside a mosque in Peshawar killed over 100 people and 200 were injured. 
India made a policy shift vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan after the 2016 Uri terrorist attack, advocating the elimination of terrorism from the subcontinent. Like India, the rest of South Asia suffers from terrorism created and sponsored by Pakistan. After the Peshawar school massacre, Prime Minister Modi had even stated that there is no good or bad terrorism. As the world suffers with extremism and terrorism, India stands a firm with its motto to condemn and eliminate terrorism with the help of its global partners. And let's now move to Pakistan, a cash-strapped country which has reached a long-awaited staff-level agreement with the International Monetary Fund on a $3 billion standby agreement to support the authorities' immediate efforts to stabilize the economy from external shocks. The South Asian nation has been gripped in economic crisis for a long time. But will the IMF loan help it to survive as Pakistan continues to face political instability and corruption? Take a look. Pakistan was almost on the brink of economic collapse when it struck a deal with the International Monetary Fund to secure a 3 billion US dollars bailout. It's a cheering moment for the country's politicians, businessmen and common men as the South Asian economy gets a much-awaited respite. But will Pakistan ensure its citizens about economic stability and growth in the future? The country with a plentiful of challenges like political instability, corruption and resurging inflation has already been bailed out for 23 times since its formation in 1947. The deal offers some temporary respite to Pakistan which is fighting an acute balance of payments crisis and falling foreign exchange reserves. The credit rating will, will take some time and will take how the how the uh, how the government is implementing the conditions of IMF, and they will take it very. Uh, they will watch all the steps that the government will take, and will take the decision of uh, the revision of the credit rating later. So I don't think that the credit rating uh, agencies will uh, will immediately uh, revise up the rating of Pakistan soon. But it will take some time. We'll see how the conditions are met by the Pakistan and we'll see how the Pakistan is taking the reforms. And then they will uh, review our rating again. Moody, a global credit rating agency, reveals that Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves, standing at a mere 3.5 billion US dollars as of mid June, are significantly insufficient to cover even a month's worth of imports. This stark shortfall in reserves poses a formidable challenge to Pakistan's ability to meet its external financing requirements not only for the ongoing fiscal year but also for the foreseeable future. With approximately 25 billion US dollars worth of repayments including principal and interest falling due in the current fiscal year, the new IMF financing while falling short of covering all obligations, is anticipated to unlock support from other bilateral and multilateral partners to help bridge the financing gap. The business community, however, is still hopeless for any change in the situation with the IMF bailout. Pakistan is a the उसकी वजह सबसे बड़ी यही कि क्योंकि ये पेट्रोल महंगा होगा तो ट्रांसपोर्टेशन महंगी होगी जिस तरीके से ये पेट्रोल महंगा होगा या बिजली महंगी होगी तो चीजों की कॉस्ट जो है वो डबल हो जाएगी जब डबल होगी तो उससे क्या कि लोगों की खरीदो फरोख नहीं होगी और जिससे जो है सबसे ज्यादा ये प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट होगा वो महंगाई पर होगा और आम आदमी पर होगा The common people in Pakistan are facing severe problems like unemployment high inflation and economic instability in the country ये बेरोजगारी हो गई है और कारोबार है नहीं और हर आदमी परेशान हो गया है और टेंशन है मुश्किलें बढ़ती चली जा रही हैं और यही मतलब परेशानी है कारोबार के लिए कारोबार नहीं है हर आदमी परेशान है पाकिस्तान तो अब यूं समझे कि गरीब जो है गरीब तर होता जा रहा है और जो मिडिल क्लास तबका था वो भी जो है अब रोडों पे आ रहा है बेरोजगारी बढ़ रही है 
तनख्वाहें टाइम पे नहीं मिलती जो रोज़गार से लगे हुए उनको तनख्वाहें टाइम पे नहीं मिल रही इंडस्ट्री पूरी तबाह हो गई है हर इदारा जो है वो कह रहा है कि हमारे पास पैसे नहीं है मुलाजमी को फारि किया जा रहा है Since its independence in 1947, Pakistan failed to strengthen its business to make the country self-reliant. The country witnessed a trade deficit for decades. Now, as its imports remained almost three times higher than exports. In the fiscal year 2023, the cash-strapped Pakistan slashed its trade deficit by staggering 43 percent to 27.55 billion US dollars. It's a wait and watch situation as Pakistan is scheduled to hold general elections this year and its future economic prospects depend on political stability. While well, moving on India's growth story is one of innovation, ambition and resilience. The country has consistently strived to enhance the standard of living of her people. India's massive transportation system is being meticulously shaped to start send a multi-frontal challenge of hassle, pollution and delays. Green transition remains the foremost priority of the government in not just dealing with everyday transportation challenges but also to gradually eradicate the overwhelming carbon emissions. Take a look. India's transportation sector is a dynamic and vibrant ecosystem that connects people, places, and possibilities. From the bustling streets of Mumbai to the scenic highways of Ladakh, India's transportation network is a testament to its diversity, ingenuity, and resilience. India's railways are a marvel of engineering and human ingenuity, with over 115,000 kilometers of track. More than 7,000 stations and a vast array of trains that cater to every budget and taste. From the iconic Rajdhani Express to the quaint toy trains of Darjeeling, India's railways are a microcosm of its diversity and complexity. Desh ab clean, congestion-free, or convenient mobility ki taraf badh raha hai. The Indian metro system is one of the most efficient and environmentally friendly modes of transportation in the country. With millions of passengers using the metro system every day, it is essential that the system is designed to reduce carbon emissions and promote sustainability. One of the most significant ways that the Indian metro is reducing its carbon footprint is through the use of renewable energy sources. Many metro stations in India are equipped with solar panels to generate electricity and power the stations. Solar power is a clean and renewable source of energy that is free from carbon emissions, making it an ideal solution for reducing the carbon footprint of the metro system. India's first underwater metro, which spans over 3300 kilometers and will run from the east-west corridor of Kolkata, is a testament to the country's engineering prowess. With such cutting-edge technologies and state-of-art facilities, India has become an icon for development for the world. Hydrogen as a fuel has entered the Indian market as well. Hydrogen cars are ready to take over Indian roads, and India's first hydrogen train will be hitting tracks by the end of this year and will surely change the face of travel. आत्मनिर्भर भारत की एक और मिसाल है हाइड्रोजन ट्रेन दिसंबर 2023 तक हाइड्रोजन ट्रेन बनके निकलेगी जो कि पूरी तरह से भारत में डिजाइन भारत में मैन्युफैक्चर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स आर स्वीपिंग अक्रॉस इंडिया विद जीरो टेल पाइप एमिशन लोअर ऑपरेटिंग कॉस्ट कंफर्टेबल एंड अ स्मूथर राइड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स आर रीडिफाइनिंग ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एंड चैलेंजिंग कन्वेंशनल फ्यूल स्ट्रेंथ्स The research and academic institution in India are working hard for the development of indigenous and low-cost battery technology for electric vehicles. We are aggressively pursuing research on green hydrogen as a transport fuel. So I am very much confident that on that line we are working because that is the need of the country. The Indian government is pushing electric vehicles and equipping them to dominate the industry, from tax incentives to subsidies. Building charging infrastructure to battery swapping policies, India is making way to accelerate her green transition.
The electrification of Indian Railways is an evolutionary brighter, more sustainable future. By reducing the reliance on fossil fuels, electrification helps to reduce the carbon footprint and improve the air quality in the surrounding areas. The transition to electric trains is making India's goal of achieving a net zero carbon emission target by 2070 clear and visible. With every new route kilometer electrified and every new electric locomotive produced, the railways are moving closer to a greener nation. The electrification of over 1,900 route kilometers during the 2022 to 2023 fiscal year is an incredible accomplishment representing a 41% increase from the previous year. Additionally, the production of 785 electric locomotives in the first few months of the fiscal year is a remarkable feat. From buses to trains to personal vehicles, India has made remarkable progress in switching to green energy. This is even more significant as India, despite being an emerging economy, has maintained an approach that has been responsible and focused on the goal of eliminating her carbon footprint. And time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Japan marks the first anniversary of the death of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe on July 8, a year after he was shot dead while campaigning in the western city of Nara. A polarizing figure throughout his career, the Japanese government's decision to hold a full state funeral for Abe in September 2022 also proved controversial, sparking protests against the use of public funds to pay for the ceremony. Abe's killing set off a flood of revelations about ties between lawmakers in the ruling Liberal Democratic Party he once led and the Unification Church, which critics call a cult, sparking a backlash against current Premier Fumio Kishida. Abe served two terms as Prime Minister, stepping down in 2020, citing ill health. Before his death, he remained in dominant presence in the LDP, controlling one of its major factions. The Taliban administration in Afghanistan has ordered beauty saloons to close within a month. The morality minister said in the latest shrinking of access to public places for Afghan women. Foreign governments and UN officials have condemned growing restrictions on women since the Taliban returned to power in 2021 after defeating the US-backed government as foreign forces withdrew. Last year, authorities closed most girls' high schools, barred women from university and stopped many female Afghan aid staff from working. Many public places including bathhouses, gyms and parks have been closed to women. دولت اسلامی موشما امارات ای را باید خودشان بفهمند بعض خانم ها سینمی حال ناناور خانه ندارند به وضاحت هستند مثلا مرد سرپرست ندارند خود خانم ها مجبور هستند کار کنند وظیفه کنند بعضشان دکان های آرائشگری دارند مجبور هستند کار کنند دیگه از این نگاه ما هیچ نمی بینم که باید یا بسته شوند The Buddha Nilkanta Dharamshala, built under Indian assistance, has been handed over to Nepali authorities in a ceremony on Wednesday. The building has been completed two and a half years after laying the foundation stone on March 11, 2021. A special ceremony held at the premises of a temple was attended by Nepal's Vice President Ram Sahai Prasad Yadav, Deputy Chief of the Indian Embassy in Kathmandu, Prasanna Srivastav, Mathadish of the temple and Nepali lawmakers. The reconstruction of the Dharmshala at Buddha Nilkant is the third of 28 cultural heritage conservation and restoration projects being undertaken with the reconstruction cost of 5,800 Nepali rupees committed by the Government of India for the cultural heritage sector.
In India, the month of Shravan honors Hindu Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati. This year, Shravan will extend for a duration of two months, which is a rarity seen after almost two decades. Let's take a look at how the Indians are observing Shravan, which is observed as the holiest month in Hinduism. The month of Shravan has commenced, and with it, the annual Kavar Yatra pilgrimage of Lord Shiva's devotees. The Yatra has already begun in Varanasi, a holy city situated on the banks of the Ganges River in northern India. Devotees from all over the country have flocked to the city to offer prayers at the Kashi Vishwanath Temple. The pilgrimage is expected to attract devotees from north, south and west India in the coming days. It is also believed that anyone who worships Lord Shiva with a whole heart in Shravan month gets all their desires fulfilled. आज बहुत दिव्य बाबा का दरबार बहुत अच्छा सजा था अंदर से भी सजा था और बहुत दिव्य दरबार सजा था और बहुत भीड़ था बहुत दर्शनार्थी लोग आए थे जिसमें हम लोग भी आए थे सुबह साढ़े तीन बजे नित्य आते हैं रोज साढ़े तीन बजे आ जाते हैं बाबा का स्पर्श दर्शन करते हैं इन गुवाहाटी डेविडीज हैव गैदर्ड एट दी कामाख्या टेम्पल टू ऑफर देयर प्रेयर्स टू द गॉडेस The Kamakya Temple is not only famous for its unique architecture but also for the power of wish fulfillment. People pray to Devi Kamakya and tie bronze bells for the fulfillment of their desires. It is believed that the reproductive organ of Sati settled on the earth at this place which was followed by her death. सावन तो हमारा जगह बहुत पवित्र महीना है और हम हिंदू इसको बहुत ही धूमधाम से मनाते हैं और सावन का पहला दिन माँ का दर्शन हुआ तो मैं बहुत ही अपने आप को खुशनसीब मानता हूँ कि माँ का पहला दर्शन मुझे हुआ इस चीज के लिए ड्यूरिंग दिस मंथ पीपल ऑफ एन फास्ट ऑन मंडे एंड परफॉर्म पूजा ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा दे ऑफ अर मिल्क फ्लावर्स एंड अदर ऑफरिंग टू द डेटी एंड चांट मंत्रास एंड प्रेस इन इज ऑनर This is seen as a way to seek blessings from Lord Shiva and to purify the mind and body. Ultimately, Shravan is a time to focus on spiritual growth and to deepen our connection with the divine. Whether we choose to fast, perform puja, attend festivals or engage in other spiritual practices, the goal is to cultivate a sense of inner peace and harmony and to connect with the divine presence. that resides within all of us Well the month of Shravan holds deep religious and cultural significance for the Hindus in India and neighboring Nepal With that we come to the end of this week's episode see you next week goodbye and take care People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.